Whoa. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Happy Friday to a new edition, a new season, a new year of The Trading Desk. My name is Joshua Thanos, and this is my Morty, Jason Maine. Rick? That's right. I guess. Uh, Pickle Rick. 2019. Yeah, man. It's upon us. It's a whole new year. Everything's different now, Jason. Yeah. Everything's changed, except everything's the same. That's right. So, uh, all right. So, how was your uh, how was your New Year, Jason? It's good. Break was good. Uh, yeah. A couple Fridays not having to come into the city was was good. That's cool. Hopefully, you guys didn't mess us too bad. Uh, you were in Florida. Uh, yes, I was. I was not. It was terrible. Soon to be. It was like it was like uh, so sh- blue skies, so sunny. warm weather. The the ocean was a little like the water was like bath water. It was like so warm. It was it was I'm, terrible, Jason. I remember those days. Yeah, man. But no, it was awesome. Did you? Uh, What'd you get for Christmas? Anything? Or Hanukkah? Or Kwanzaa? Or whatever Can you celebrate? Get anything? No. Yeah. Any new watches? Nothing? I got myself some money in my savings account. How there you go. You? That's nice. Yeah, no, I uh, I got, I gifted a few watches. I didn't get anything. I Throughout the year, I spent a bunch on watches this year. So I think a New Year's resolution is not to buy any new watches in 2019. Or, uh, so my wife says. That's good. What about be, you? You have a resolution? Uh, yeah. What's that? Uh, I'm just going to keep working on me. Oh, okay. This is nothing, good. Yeah, nothing that we uh, job. get into on YouTube. Okay, All but right. uh, <laughs> you don't like you don't the, like uh, when I ask probing questions. Uh, I've been on a, uh, a health related journey the last uh, well, you doing six well, months. Yeah, yeah, man. I think so, it's noticeable. Thank you. I'm proud of you, man. Thank you. That's right. We're going to be cooking some steaks later. Hopefully, steaks are an integral part. Yes, that's right. Awesome, cool, man. Well, again, guys, thank you very much. Yeah, we took a few weeks off, um, and now we're back to the old. Uh, the old format. That's right. The mess that you guys episode all 30. love or hate, whatever. Yeah, this is episode thirty. I guess we skipped uh, uh, the deskies would truly be episode thirty, but those are the deskies now. So I'm told. So uh, this is so that was regular deskies format. one. Okay. And then this is thirty again. I don't know. Someone that is not us decided this. Who cares? We're gonna roll with it though. All right. Now that so, we've uh, mildly made fun of it. All right. So back to the normal format. Back to a new year. Let's start with a wrist shot. Jason, what do you got? New year, same watch. Mm-hmm. This is the one one four zero six zero. That's the uh, non-date ceramic Submariner. So current generation. Although this one's a two thousand fourteen. For you guys that don't know, this watch is uh, probably one of the hottest watches on the market right now. Um, super happy that I got Says this. Says you, the owner of the watch. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, uh, I got this. Uh, you know, it wasn't it wasn't a dog when I got it. I paid a pretty penny for it, but it's certainly worth more than I paid for it now. Um, and uh, these guys are hard to get. So non-date, uh, kind of a clean. Everybody likes this because it's a cleaner dial than the date. Although uh, I'm good with not having a date on my watches. The Panerai doesn't have a date. Uh, you used the, to. Yeah, I'm used to. You used to, to tell it, me so. that. No, but in the past. When I first met you, you said you didn't like my Panerai before because it didn't have a date. And now look at you. Uh, look no, at that. We no grow, Jason. Yeah. Life changes. So super happy with this piece. Don't foresee it going anywhere. Uh, cool. And uh, Unless someone this makes one's, you a nice offer. This one's mine. That, that belongs to you. Unlike uh, yeah, the no, watch this, this one doesn't wearing right yet now. belong to me. But <laughs> I said my, new, my, my resolution was not to buy a watch. But make, trading. I didn't say anything about trading. So, all right, on my wrist today, let's get a little close up. The drunken cameraman, nice. So this is a Panerai 643. So if you guys have been watching this since the uh, beginning, uh, you would know that my very first Swiss watch was a Panerai Radio Mirror, it was a Panerai 380 stainless steel, which I did trade. Um, this belongs to uh, a guy that you may or may not know downstairs, Claudio. He had it on his wrist. I uh, looked at it and I said, oh man, that's so nice. And I asked him if I can wear it for today. And him and I might be doing a little trade, possibly, if he wants to get rid of it. But so this is... Uh, one of the newer model ceramic Panerai's. This one was released in 2015. It's a 50 hour power reserve. It's got an ETA movement, so it's not any of the in houses. Um, but it uh, it's nice. I really like it. Uh, so I've always really liked the Panerai 292, which yeah. would have been the first uh, ceramic radio mirror. That watch has gone up and down in value. This is again like a, this is a um, an updated version, I guess you would call it. It's a, Love that dial. I think it has the same movement as the 292. I haven't. I have to look into it. But yeah, full ceramic, um, wire lugs. Oh, it's so comfortable, man. I love this thing. A lot of people don't like radio mirrors. I'm not one of those people, Jason. Yeah, not my favorite. I, I can truly appreciate the fact that it's like the first Panerai. Mm-hmm. Um, if it wasn't so difficult, I like to change the straps a lot. And I know a lot of Panerai guys oh, are no, strap super easy. guys. It's just you got to fiddle with the little screws and where you put it. I mean, Listen, it's just it's not as if easy. If you're not as a moron, it's a real easy, Luminor. Jason. So, it's all right. 1940s are cool, too, but if I was going to buy a Radimir, 
probably go with the traditional wire lugs. Yeah, it's nice. It, it, this is a 45 millimeter, so this is larger than the the 44 millimeter Luminar that and I have. They wear about the same. Yeah, exactly. But it's well, it's flat. It's got no lugs. So I mean, even a 47 millimeter radio mirror is somewhat wearable by me. I have a seven inch wrist. If you guys are keeping score. And a 45 millimeter radio mirror wears probably a little bit smaller than my 44 Luminar, but yeah. So I'm really liking this watch, um, and uh, we'll see what uh, what happens if I can make a, a little deal ski with my what's buddy Claudio. Is, what's funny is that your your resolution is to not buy not watches. buy watches, and you walked in downstairs and two watches that aren't yours were like, ooh, that's nice. Oh. Let me see that. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, no. So, uh, yeah, like most... I'm not consistent, Jason. Most Americans, <laughs> you're probably going to be, uh, what, a month in before you break your, your resolution? Well, let's see what happens, Jason. Maybe I'll come into a large sum of money and then I can change my resolution. All right. <laughs> Fingers knows? crossed. Yeah, maybe somebody from the who are watching the show today wants to buy a Richard Mill today. Yeah, you know what? Make None of you guys sent us a watch for the holidays. I was waiting for like a... You're famous now. Here's a here's a free watch, but it never well, you're, came. You're not famous, Jason. Neither I don't know. <laughs> we do a stupid right, YouTube well, show. What am I doing this show for? I don't know. Because it's fun. Get set of the office on Fridays. Anyways, that's true. So, all right, guys. Um, so that's wrist checks. Uh, I see a lot of people in the in the um, in the chat saying they uh, they don't like ratty mirrors. But some people do like them. So yeah, there's a, either a yay or a nay for Panerai. Is the consensus here? Uh, couple comments about the hobnail dial oh, yeah, hop, it's you know uh, what i never really liked the hobnail dial the fir- i think the first hobnail dial was on a pam 25 if i had to make a guess i'm yeah. pretty sure that's what it was submersible um, it's, i don't normally love it but i like the texture the 25 is a watch that i would like to own one day yeah titanium it's kind of it's cool pam 24 Submar- yeah, uh, yeah submersible yeah you like that well i think they only made that for like four three or four yeah. years after I would, i'd be happy with the 24 as well but. 24 is a good watch um i think it's underrated yeah but uh yeah so uh, let's get to the next segment. We are not talking about Rolex at all today on the show. Well, except this for was just clickbait moment. the title. So you guys, yeah, no, nah, yeah, we're kidding. gonna do uh, Piaget versus Bulgari yeah. today. Yeah, no. Nah. All right, so uh, let's do this or that. We're back to the this or that, guys. And yeah, we picked Don, a brand that people love to hate and also love to love and love to pay over list for. And uh, we decided we'll start off the new year with a bang, and we're gonna pit two Rolexes against each other. Two watches that could possibly be discontinued this year, right? There's been a lot of talk about that. So we got the Batman versus the Hulk. So wait, which one am I representing here, Jason? I believe uh, you picked the Batman. Okay. Oh, I'm the Hulk? Okay. The producer says I picked the Hulk. I don't think that's correct. but <laughs> well, You get to defend the Batman. So all right. All right. Um, so this or that for roughly the same money now because they're both going well over list, both probably between eleven dollars and $12,000 on the resale market. Um, list is similar. I think it's nine thousand fifty for the sub, and uh, what's is it the same for the for the GMT? They're roughly the same, yeah. Yeah. So, right Not around nine thousand dollars retail. Retail doesn't really matter at on this either point one of these now, watches. unless you're best friends, unless you're a large customer of a um, of of a retailer, or they they actually do take like a waiting list, uh, first come first serve. It's hard to find these watches right now at list. So if you want it. If it's your first time watch buyer and you want to pick them up today, you're going to have to pay over list for these watches, and it's eleven to twelve thousand. So, uh, if I'm defending the Hulk, uh, first of all, both these watches I think are equally cool. Um, I go back and forth. I like the GMT because of the GMT function. I like the Hulk because it's you know it's a Submariner and it's uh, it's off the beaten path. I think I've told this story before. I don't know if I if I have actually the. Uh, I had a chance to buy a Hulk probably about three years ago, pre-owned for $5,500, and I was going to buy myself something nice. I wore the Hulk over, over the weekend, and at that time, it wasn't really a premium over the, over the, um, the black. Uh, if, it was like anything, $500. Was, yeah, I was going to say, if anything, like three three fifty. dollars Yeah, it was a s- small time. amount over the, uh, a black sub. Back then, they were all easy to find. So I wore it for the weekend and decided it was too green for me. Um, so I passed on it at a fifty-five hundred dollar price point. So right now, when when the watch goes for over ten thousand, I'm kicking myself. But uh, you know that's how it goes, I guess. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think that. So okay, Submariner so is uh, was that the first sport uh, Rolex sport watch? The, well, the Noda, the well, Noda, yeah. the Noda sub was the first. Well, so if you want to talk about like of the modern generation of Submariner, then yeah, the non date was the the, the, the first one six four. But in terms of heritage. Submariner. There's many more customers for the Submariner than the GMT, though. I feel like the the Batman 
made the GMT a little bit hotter. I mean, obviously, they had the Pepsi and they had the Coke back in the day, which at the time probably didn't get that much love. So Yeah. Uh, I don't know. So here's the thing. the Obviously, the, like, you can make a case for either piece. Um, I would say the Hulk can't be your only Rolex. Mm-hmm. Whereas the Batman could be your only Rolex. That's true. Um, you know, so if I was going to defend it that way, I guess you could make that argument. Mm-hmm. I, I personally, if I was, if you said you could own one of either of these two watches, I would probably want the Hulk. Sure. But <laughs> that would be something. You know, you can make the case either way. I think that the Batman. I mean, listen, I. I this is live. Yeah. Here's a, here's a thing. Stu tats. The GMT is unique in the fact that it has a different complication, right? It's not the same watch as the Submariner. I personally like the way that the Sub sits on the wrist a little bit better than GMT. I feel like well, the GMT Batman... GMT is a thicker case. Right. Even so though the, the That's what I'm saying. I like the, the way that the, mm-hmm. the Sub sits on the wrist better. The Batman, I, I would make the argument that it's better aesthetically because it's, it's a more monotone watch, but it's a different enough mm-hmm. that it stands out. Um, I think it is much better than the all black one. So when the the original, the, really? yeah, when this piece came out and it was one or the other and they were the same, like why not get the Batman? Because it's kind of cool. So now the price differential. If I was going to, if I absolutely, let's say I had the Hulk already and I wanted to go get a GMT, mm-hmm. I would just get the all black GMT because the price differential is crazy. You're talking thousands of dollars differential between the just well, there's for the value bezel. play there. Yeah. Yeah. So I would probably go with the all black, but I mean, all I'd say so. The GMT is definitely more versatile. That can be your only watch, honestly. Right, that's what, if yeah. you only had one watch in your collection, that, that the Batman GMT can work. It can work as a sport watch. It can work as a dress watch. It's not overly flashy, but it's got enough to be, you know, to give you a little bit of pep in it, you know, with the blue. The Whereas, kicker, the kicker is the is the the buckle. Yeah. So, well, if they had the um, uh, the glide lock, would be that would set that watch off and make it perfect you know i guess the reasoning for that is uh you know it's not a dive watch and that's a dive clasp uh i understand rolex but to me that's an excuse for after the fact it's like i feel like rolex is like that's how it is that's how we made it that's how it's going to stay there's no like same thing with the oyster flex bands Mm -hmm. like there's so much room for improvement oh god that they could fix the oyster flex the rubber bands Mm -hmm. but that's how it is that's how we made it that's how it's going to stay you're right like why wouldn't you just put the that buckle on the batman and on every sport model watch so if it wasn't a dive watch, then why is there an easy link? You know, well, there's they, a little bit of flexibility. A, right, I, small. Amount. This buckle is is the absolute best buckle on any Rolex. Uh, the, so the why why it would not be on all sport model watches? I don't understand. But. Again, well, because for them, their reasoning is that it's that's a dive clasp to go over like a, a wetsuit, whereas that's where you need all that. I mean, thing is, people aren't spending eleven thousand dollars on it because you could buy a Sunto dive watch, yeah. which is. I mean, in terms better of, for if, diving. If, yeah, infinitely better for diving, and you can pay what, like three or four grand for one of those or less. Not I don't even, know. Man. You yeah. s- used to sell those watches. Yeah, you can get. I mean, you could buy something like you can dive bucks in for at least like six hundred dollars. Six hundred dollars for a Cinto, and that's a real dive watch that'll save your life. Yeah. Um, but you know, so that's their reasoning. Um, the Hulk is certainly part of a larger collection. It has the better clasp. Um, in terms of resale, it got to the point where it's at faster than the than the Batman, though the Batman now, they're about on par in terms of resale. I would say that the Hulk is still held to a higher standard as far as the market than the Batman, but mm-hmm. the Batman's on its way there. Uh, two years ago, the rumor was that the Hulk was going to be discontinued. Mm-hmm. That's what started the whole hype behind the Hulk, and it's just it never got discontinued, but it slowly just became on fire because mm-hmm. that rumor, now we're starting to hear, to answer some of the people in the comments, we are starting to hear uh, as early as... What was it? Uh, about two weeks ago, we heard about the Batman. There were rumors getting out there that it was going to be discontinued. It was like towards the end of last year. Nobody really knows what's going to happen until it happens. Well, the Rolex r- does not. Right. It's like Apple. Like you just don't know until it happens. Well, yeah. Exactly. There's no. So the the people who are making these decisions aren't leaking these answers. Right. Because in the end, they're selling these watches regardless if they're being discontinued or not. Right. So they don't need speculators because that's that's what that does if it's being discontinued then the people who maybe maybe aren't in love with the watch but are interested in buying something that's going to go up in value speculators are going to go buy those watches and create more demand they don't rolex doesn't need that so especially do you, now do you think there'll be a time in the in the you know near future that the batman gets to the hulk's level as far as secondary market i think they're they're at there now uh i mean i don't Personally, I don't think so. Like, I think if, the last if one I heard that comes, was sold. If somebody says, I have a, 
I have two watches, right? Mm -hmm. Both watches are new with stickers on them, box papers, and I need to sell the watches. Which one are you? You know, so, uh, certainly for me, the Hulk is is more what is, is a more viable purchase choice. The and, last, uh, as far as secondary market. So let me ask you a question, Jason. The last confirmed sale on a Hulk, how much? Do you know? Uh, thirteen five. Oh no, I don't think it was that much. Yeah, it was twelve. Was it thirteen five? Thirteen five. Wow, I've been away for for two weeks. So well, so I know that the, the last confirmed sale on a Batman that I know of for pre-owned like new was eleven five, which right. is more than just a few weeks ago. So so. So I guess I yeah, guess, I guess if, you're right. If the rumor is true, mm -hmm. and the Batman is discontinued at Basel, and the Hulk is not, which I don't know how that would happen, the Hulk becomes but, a fifteen thousand dollar watch. Right, but might <laughs> I don't know might if the more. Batman's discontinued. There's tons of them on the secondary market right now, so I think all those disappear, and then maybe in six months or or a year, then it's a fifteen thousand dollar watch. But there's so much inventory because the market's been going up on them. Everybody's been getting rid of them. Well, so one thing about Rolex, if you notice, that they don't discontinue a model without replacing it normally, right? Unless models is, is so a dog are, through retail. Right. So, like, I guess the exception would be the, uh, though it's not even really an exception, is the 40 millimeter deep sea, uh, or sorry, sea dweller. They discontinued that, but then they came, yeah, sea dweller 4000, 40 millimeter. They discontinued it. Then I guess a year later they came out with the forty three. So I guess I don't know how you look at that, but right. it's um, not a true replacement. But so, but if I have to guess at which one they're gonna, well, first of all, we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's check the poll here. I'm not even entirely sure that this is a true versus. I'm kind of pulling for the, the Batman. I, yeah, the Batman. I, I, I mean, I personally, I mean, you like the I Hulk? I actually pulled up the poll before the show and voted for the Hulk. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, I mean, they're I both know. good watches, but so okay. So the Hulk probably uh, the point that it's less polarizing. It's not. It, it, a lot of people feel the same way that I did uh, about the color. It's too yeah. green. But um, I feel like if it's your third watch, then it's fine. Yes. You know. Yeah, but so, a lot of guys who are watching this show or can't afford. You know, that's fine. Two so, nice watches and but also. That's, but a, that's not to say that you can't uh, understand that it's not an everyday watch. You know, mm -hmm. just because it, it's not for you doesn't mean you don't like it. I, mean, I gotcha. So. Um, all right, so back to so okay, the 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 Hulk is losing badly, um, but in terms of being discontinued, and we can let's let's move past this or that and just finish this conversation. Um, the if the uh, so the Hulk is discontinued. There's what are they going to replace it with? Right now, there's nothing on the horizon, and I don't know. Is there another color? So the uh, the running theory is a new generation Submariner is is been on the horizon for a while with a new movement. Like yeah, a one two six six one zero probably be re released with some kind of new dial aesthetic. Uh, there's I've heard rumors as as mild as like a red line Submariner, but they already I've have heard, a forty three millimeter red line now. So maybe that I mean in terms of categorizing the the catalog and making things similar, like mm -hmm. do you do you discon what the smart play would be would probably be take the red line off the forty three. Now you make something different. You've discontinued the forty three red line. Make a red it line together, right? Make but no you, more forty three. No, no, I would keep the watch really without the red line. Maybe make another dial change, mm -hmm. right? What if they discontinue that? Mm -hmm. Make it a regular dial, different dial change, and then they made a red line sub for like the new anniversary sub or whatever. I don't know. Like just change things up a little bit. If that happens, and then maybe you do a color like you were saying though. I don't know what else you would do. You can't do blue because then you take away the white gold blue, right? Well, usually they start off. Yeah, start with the precious metal and then go down to steel. I guess I don't know. It's that that would be disheartening if they went blue. Um, I don't know any other colors that they could do. They're not going to do a red sub. I don't think that would be weird. But so my point was this: that they usually replace it. Right. So what they just came out with. Though? Sorry. White on white. Eh, maybe. Uh, but so the they made a new GMT in steel. So I could see them discontinuing the Batman because it makes a bit of sense here. You know, they've had the Batman, had a run with the Batman. It did really well. They made a new, um, uh, made a new GMT, the Pepsi, which you know makes reviews in terms of people who are wearing it. Some people love it, some people don't. I know right. you and I aren't the biggest fans of the watch, but again, uh, that would make sense. And then at that point, in terms of value, I feel like the Batman would shoot up, and I could see them making a new sub, a one two six six one zero with a new movement. Maybe uh, people complain about the maxi case being too like thick, so maybe slimming it down a little bit with the new movement, and but continuing black sub and a green sub. Yeah. I don't know. My hopes for that for the new case would be 
not necessarily the thickness of the case because mm -hmm. I think that the watch the watch aff affords me the ability to wear it where normally a 40 millimeter watch isn't something that I would wear. Mm -hmm. So I like the maxi case personally. I think a lot of people would very, be very happy if they kept the case the same thickness, but they shortened the lugs a little bit yeah, or made the lugs a little thinner. Mm -hmm. But as far as the way, the thickness on the case, I think it's perfect. I um, can see that. So, so yeah, okay, maybe so I a got little two, bit of a diet. We have two, first of all, your buddy Imad, uh, Badway, says uh, a Coke. What's up, Imad? Yeah, he says a, a Coke GMT. Ugh. If they did that, I feel like it would be overkill. Let them let the let the let Pepsi, the Pepsi sell. fizzle out. Or maybe they, maybe do, they do a Coke with um, on on a uh, on an oyster, which would be nice. I say you release the uh, all black GMT mm -hmm. on that bracelet. All black on Jubilee. On Jubilee. I uh, say maybe. you let it you let it be available. But then again, I don't know if that takes away from the Pepsi. But people would be all over that. People that have that watch on a regular oyster would be all over a Jubilee version. I guess. Um, you know, I don't know. There's there's tons of things they could do. I have also heard rumors on the forums and stuff that the uh, the watch that I want, the uh, 216570, may be getting replaced with uh, something ceramic-based, like a ceramic bezel version. Cool. Don't know what that would look like. Uh, that'd be cool. The watch that, is already kind of big, though, so I feel like and it's going to wear yeah, larger. Or maybe a, a new proportioned version. I don't know. Uh, maybe a 40 millimeter with a ceramic bezel. I'd I guess. like that. That'd be cool. Um, that I don't know how it would look on the watch. but So if you guys haven't noticed, we kind of just went right into it. But today, one thing that we want to talk about is like what are, we, what are our hopes or what are we thinking is going to happen this year in mm -hmm. 2019, right? So um, this, you know, obviously we're talking about Rolex, which is very important to a lot of people. What's going to happen? You know what I could see happen this year is a, um, an Oyster Flex Submariner. Makes, makes sense, especially if they can – now they can keep the same class. Yeah. That would be the best option though. I just – I don't know how it would wear. I mean, you've put your sub on it on an oyster on a um, on the rubber B on the rubber B. It's just it it's doesn't right. feel like it's, a Rolex. So that sometimes, yeah, I think that the the bracelet is so perfect that it kind of sucks to take it off of there. Um, I put it on the rubber B and it lasts like a week, and mm -hmm. then I'm sick of it, and I put it back on the bracelet. You did the same thing with the Yachtmaster when you had it. That's right. And it just doesn't seem to stick. The Oyster Flex, to be honest with you, I've I've worn you know the Daytonas with them on there for for a little while. I don't care for the way the oyster flex touches the wrist the, sure like the bellows underneath it i think like most people buy it and they're then they have to sing its praises because they own the watch it's you know but the, the way that the bellows sit on the wrist it just kind of it feels weird to me um so the oyster flex not my favorite thing plus i don't like the fact that you have to like uh constantly you have to measure both sides and make sure yeah, you get annoying. the right pieces mm -hmm. and there's two different sizes or what is it six sizes for each side or something like that yeah, something absurd. Uh, and so, that's one thing which that... could all just be fixed with putting one of these buckles and having uh, some way to cut the strap on both sides, similar to like a Nautilus. Or, or cut, you know, they, any, don't, they don't have to cut. Strap. They can just have the um, the glide lock. And right. then that, because I think that's one thing they want to avoid is people cutting straps on the watches. Though, if it's good enough for a paddock aquanaut. But here's here's my question. If you're like, so they don't they don't want the stickers on the watches on the secondary market, right? Because they're trying to like combat the watches looking new okay. on the pre-owned market. Mm -hmm. Cutting straps would be perfect for that. Yeah. Because once you cut a strap, like then yeah, it's, it's obviously truly worn. Yeah, that makes so sense. So I guess I don't know. I just is what it is. I guess yeah. all we can really do is bitch about it. <laughs> all right. So I mean, so in terms of what we might think, what we think might be coming out of Rolex is hopefully they'll discontinue something. Uh, there's a lot of sport watches be in the some, lines right they'll now. They'll shake something up no matter what. I could see them discontinuing the 44 altogether. It's just, eh. I mean, there's demand for it because it's a stainless Rolex, but it's not very wearable. Like, I just bought one from a customer of mine, and I put it on my wrist. I'm like, damn, this thing's so big. It's just too big. Like, you don't like that watch. It's too big for you, right? Which one? The 44? No, I don't like the 44. Yeah. Deep sea. It's too, the, so I wore, uh, I took a 43 millimeter into the city to meet a client the other day and I wore it for maybe an hour, mm -hmm. the, the red liner. Mm -hmm. And it is it is truly really nice and you don't, like I used to put the watch down and then you don't really, don't really get it until you wear it for a little bit but it's still too big. Like sure. I kind of wanted to fall in love with it um, but it's just, it's still too big. And, mm -hmm. but I could definitely uh, see myself falling in love with like, or I still love the uh, Sea Dweller 4000. Yeah. In the 40 millimeter, millimeter case because yeah. it's a little bit bigger than a regular sub. But it's not quite as gargantuan as the the red liner. But um, I see someone saying a green no date sub would work. I, I would love to see any other Submariner in a no date, even if you made it like an all yellow gold 
you know, something unobtainable. Yellow gold, no date. That would be cool, man. But, like, just any other love for a non-date dial on a sub besides this watch because it's only made in one flavor. Hmm. Like, so if you just if you just went to the extreme and made it, you know, a full yellow gold something but a non-date, I think that would be super cool. Okay. But, uh, Interesting. Yeah, I could uh, – what do you think about, like, the – them shaking up i don't know if they would shake up like the 39 millimeter oyster perpetual i mean they've um, already kind of done that with all those dials yeah right? they did the they white, the white and the black yeah but they have all well, the op 39s you, they have them in like was it yeah, blue there's, there's a gray. bunch of different flavors so that's that's kind of like their their whimsical funky stuff um i'd like to see maybe a um the, do something with the mill gauss um That'd like cool like, like a, a call back of yeah a, up to the, maybe with a with like a rotating bezel that would be kind of cool, but I don't know. There's a lot of options, and we can talk about it moving forward. But Rolex is not the only game in town, Jason. No, not at all. Um, I think that two brands are going to have a good year, uh, specifically that are kind of not really in terms of trading, not really watches that people pay attention to as much. Um, one of them, I think, is Grand Seiko. Mm-hmm. I think the what Grand Seiko did last year in terms of rebranding a little bit, um, and it might just be just because I'm paying attention more this year than, than I ever had, but I feel like there's more demand for Grand Seiko. Um, I see some guys going on runs, and instead of spending $20,000 on an AP, they spend $20,000 on five Grand Seikos. Now they got all these watches, and they're funky right. and cool, and they focus on dials. They have good movements, um, and they're different, and there's kind of like a, especially now, like people getting in on them, and they're like, oh, you know, before maybe they get too popular. So I think Grand Seiko might have, is, is queued up to have a nice year. Um, and I also think that Cartier, and I've said it before, and I know a lot of um, the snobs are, uh, are disagreeing with me and, and hating on Cartier. But, I mean, you guys know that I picked up uh, a Cartier Santos uh, with the white dial uh, earlier in the year. And I've really been liking that watch, and the technology is really cool, and I've talked about it a few times. And ad nauseum, and some people are hating on it. But uh, one thing I noticed when I was downstairs uh, just a, like an hour ago is that they have a new version of the watch already. So I'm guessing they're thinking they're watching our show because you and I actually suggested this. Yeah. I think this was released yesterday, and we received the watch yesterday. Go ahead and get a... This is the new dial. This yeah. is the new dial on the Cartier Santos. Can we see what color that is, guys? That is a sunburst blue dial on a steel Cartier Santos. I thought it was white gold, which I think that probably would have been a better, better idea, but... So this is a new release. This is a pre-SIHH uh, 2019 release, and I believe it was like released yesterday. So I don't know if anyone's seen this watch. I don't even know about it. Breaking news. Breaking news live. You can buy it here. So same retail, <laughs> $68.50, um, all the same technology, just with the uh, uh, blue dial, which, you know, Cartier on the cutting edge of fashion so, and, and trends yeah. with blue dials, but it's actually really nice, so and it gives a different where, dynamic. Yeah. Did you? Uh, do we have the strap picture queued up for that? Oh or? yeah. Do we have a we have a picture of the I watch on the strap too? You, Look at that, guys. Okay. Yeah. If you're going to go after the blue, awesome. it has to live on the strap. Whereas I think the white dial has to live on the bracelet, and then sometimes you put it on the strap. I don't mm-hmm. know. It's nice. I think it's a good idea. Shake it up. We said that before. I would love to see a two tone version of with the rose and steel in a brown dial. I yeah. think that would absolutely make that watch. What I think you're seeing here, though is that Cartier is about to go on a run making a bunch of different versions of this watch. I have to assume. What I would what I would say to Cartier, because they're obviously watching because they stole our idea for the dial colors, um, is don't don't overplay it. Don't make too many of them. Yeah, they probably if will. you Because if, I mean, knowing Cartier, they're going to release everything under the sun in that case. Well, I would just say make like four. That's it. Leave it at that. Yeah. Because be if nice. you do every single color and it gets played out, it's just going to be like the old santos 100 xl where it's like well but that watch flavors. was unwearable i think that was the mo- that was the big issue because the watch was this thick yeah there's just too many variations i but, doesn't matter how many variations if you can't wear it like this watch is beautiful um i don't know too many guys who are out there like collecting cartiers no it's a wearable watch one the price point's fantastic we talked about it before it's a 6850 retail and it comes with the strap and the bracelet so basically it's two watches in one it's a good it's a good first watch if yeah. somebody wants to get into watches, and, I, and listen, I know, you know, people, you want to look at Rolex, you want to look at it at, you know, Omega, I guess. Uh, it's a, There's no waiting list for these watches. They're very accessible, and there's a lot of value. So if you're looking for a watch that, you know, you want to wear something that people uh, will notice what you're wearing, yeah. but you don't want to pay over list, and you don't want to pay over $10,000, and you don't want to wait a lot around, you want to have something that's versatile. It's a great first watch as long as you're not being a snob. I feel like it's Cartier. And it's, it's in-house movement, by the yeah, way. Yeah, it's an in-house movement. I like their small touches. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's tons of tiny details. 
But oh. when I look at something like... Look at Zach Blass says. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. Tell me a forest green dial would not wouldn't yeah. be perfect, and that's exactly what I said before this before the show started. So, that's the next one, a green dial on that yeah. watch. Little details all over this watch, like the links that are that are you know quick release and captured. You know we've talked about that before. The um, date actually has a, it's a negative date wheel, which I always admire oh, yeah, on always watches. You're always crying about. I mean, but when you wheels. look at it, look how clean the date disappears into that. Six o'clock position. Well, yeah, you know what? That's a great touch because on so, on, on the white dial, it's right. not negative. It, it makes exactly. more sense. It's cohesive. So, Look at that! Wow, there's Jason, there's some nice design detail, aesthetics man. with that dial specifically. I feel like the blue cabochon really pops on the watch because the blue dial, That's especially right. when you put on a blue strap. So it's a it's a handsome watch. It's you not know, a brilliant it's blue not, though. It's dark blue. Yeah, it's not for it's me. It's not as blue as this picture is on on, I'm not on the camera. I'm not going to buy one. Certainly, you voted with your money. You like the watch. Mm -hmm. I think it's a. I think it's a great watch. There's tons of technology in there, and it's a step for Cartier in the right direction. I think they're probably one of the only uh, Richemont's brands that I would say has like a clear path to the future, mm -hmm. right? Because a lot of their a lot of their catalog is struggling with the, what they're doing on the secondary market, with their product line, where the direction of the company is going. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is the first or second step for Cartier on the way back to the promised land. Yeah, I, I think it's say. good. I mean. So, like, you know, in the in the 80s and 90s, it was Rolex and Cartier were the two watches that, you know, people bought, right? So, like, it, there wasn't – if you wanted to buy, like, a nice watch and have people know you're, you're wearing a nice watch and feel good about the watch, it was Rolex and Cartier. And Cartier straight away and became more, you know, jewelry and – I mean, obviously, it was always jewelry, but, you know – if, if you talk to some of my, uh, if I talk to some of my customers that have been collecting since like the 70s and 80s, Cartier was always on the wrist. Yeah, and obviously they went away from that and they did a bunch of different things, roadsters and you know making these huge tanks or the huge Santos and all that. So this would be nice to get back to that again. It's not overpriced for what it is, um, and it it certainly fits into a collection. I look at my watch box, which now I have like shoot man, I've probably like 20 watches. Yeah, time to and I like that watch a little bit. Yeah, maybe. Oh, maybe I'll get this. But I like that watch. Um, so I think that's – I think Cartier's got uh, – they're in the right direction with these. Hopefully, you know, it keeps going. I mean, listen, I'm not investing in the Cartier. I, would, I don't really care, but, but – uh, I, I would venture to say from a watch guy's perspective – is a good, is a good ladies watch too, by the right. way. Right. From a watch guy's perspective, I would like to see Cartier go down this path with more sport-related steel watches mm -hmm. and less of like the tank gold piece. Of, like get away from the jewelry a little bit. For the men's stuff, because this is the stuff that's hitting home runs. Mm -hmm. Like, if they redid the Pasha and like redesigned the new uh, a new Pasha in steel, mm -hmm. the watch would probably kill. Put yeah. some of these features in it. Pasha with a um, with a ceramic bezel, maybe make it a little thinner, maybe a little bit like bigger on the wrist with this cool bracelet. Right. I think that could make sense. I mean, it's I agree with that actually. So yeah. somebody said a, a Santos diver. The thing is, this is this is traditionally uh, it's a pilot's watch. If you look at the history of the Santos. Um, it's actually named after a pilot, yeah. last name Santos. So uh, I don't see like if they made this in a diver, it would be, be weird. a little weird. But well, you can't have a diving bezel on that; it would be bizarre. But I could see what about like a two-tone ceramic Santos, like ceramic bezel, two-tone ceramic links. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, I don't know. Maybe in the future of the that's watch. not making me feel warm and fuzzy, honestly. But I mean, listen, we all disagree. I mean agree to disagree. But um, but yeah, so I think Cartier can do can get back into the realm of like because. In the, I guess back in the day, the point was that it was like, you know, it was a nice gold watch to wear, right? Small gold watches, men were wearing those, right? Yeah. So like the 36 millimeter president, anybody who was anybody would have that watch and also like a Cartier tank in gold. Now, stainless steel is where it's at, so it has to be less jewelry and more sport. So this is a good a good way to go, and it carries the name. Everybody knows what Cartier yeah. is, whatever. So, so to, to touch on the Grand Seiko, because you, you kind of, mm -hmm. we dipped our toe into that, and then I uh, went straight off into Cartier. Um, I agree with you. I think Grand Seiko, and I... I've never strayed away from Grant. I think they're a fantastic brand. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like mm -hmm. uh, they're really movement oriented, and guys that love the brand know that, and that's why they buy the watches. The movements are fantastic. I don't know of a better watch company for under ten grand that has a catalog of the type of movements that Grand Seiko has. Right. Their their movement technology is fantastic. Mm -hmm. The what I would like to see Grand Seiko do is build something in a snowflake styled case. That's sportier. Mm -hmm. That looks like a younger person's watch. Sure, they need to so, fix the clasp on the, on that. I feel so, like. So, but what I'm what I'm saying, like the Grand Seiko, any of the pieces in that case or the, or that size genre, they they look like your grandfather's watch, and they're fantastic movements. And the build quality is great on the watch, but it just looks like a little bit of an older 
watch you know it looks it, and it, it's kind of the design aesthetic that they've gone with is to make it look like a more vintage watch mm-hmm. i would like to see something like uh i think i personally think the grand seiko's like the big chronographs the ceramic bezels and the ceramic links are ugly mm-hmm. i don't like those watches well, people like them people like them mm-hmm. i don't like them but what i would like to do is see something sportier so say like a like you know the new gmt that they came out with which one uh the new grand seiko gmt that just came out oh it yes, kind of yes, looks yes. a little bit like the uh explore two in in a way with yes. that half bezel mm-hmm. i think that's a positive step in the next direction of making a sportier mid side you know not mid but a sportier it's 40-ish weird. style it came out in quartz mm-hmm. what i would love to see is is to see that watch in a high beat movement or something like that so right. well i think that one thing about uh grand seiko in terms of fit is that i feel like they either go too small or too big so to, to your point like if they make something that fits Right. Like mid size, because like those divers, I really like them, but they're huge, they're yeah. ridiculous. And then some of like the snowflakes are, uh, uh, or like that case tends to be like a little small on the wrist. Uh, yeah, so it's I'd, tough. It, it, I think that they need to really tackle like a mid, like a uh, forty to forty-one millimeter sportier watch, which seems to be what they're doing with the GMT. I just would like to see that watch come out in like a high beat movement, and then mm-hmm. maybe we could do some different variations. Can I get a forty-one to forty-two millimeter? dive piece that's not like marine master can i get an actual like grand seiko branded right you know watch with a nice dial like because that's why you're buying grand well, seiko is the movement and the dials well the one that i brought on this show earlier in the year that was that quartz diver that was right. cool so the that, f9 that movement right f9 exactly yeah. which is cool i mean again i like quartz i don't mind it um quartz is awesome for the right watch mm-hmm. and like you know sparingly but candidly i'm not i'm buying a grand seiko because i love the movement mm-hmm. like and while the while i feel like the f9 movement is fantastic and if it's your second or third grand seiko and i'm pretty sure i said that when you brought that watch on uh-huh. then it's awesome because who cares and it's it's the best quartz movement mm-hmm. but their automatics are so good that i feel like uh, if i was going to own one grand seiko it'd have to be an automatic like a high beat makes sense but um i love the brand i like i've said before i've loved seiko for a long time um and this is just like the next you know obviously the next step up sure um so and they've never taken they've never really been hotter since they since they split the badging Uh like they've taken off and there's still a secondary market for the the older stuff that's double badge some would say that those have gone up so it's it's strengthened it seems like the market is strengthened and and they they hold surprisingly good value especially with what you know we know what dealer price is so like there's margin there yeah and they don't really get discounted too much and there's there's the hot ones that sell for list or sometimes over depending on pre-owned but um, so Grand Seiko and Cartier were, you know, we are bullish um, in terms of the market and what they're going to do through retail. And the like, there's other brands. So what do you think about Panerai? Like quickly, because like, uh, we're being told that the show's over. What's that? Oh, okay. Two no. more hours? No, no. We got you. No, but uh, um, I don't know. I feel like Panerai's lost. You know, they're like the kid in the supermarket that lost their parents. Um, I I love the brand. You know, and I have one, and I, and I love the watch. I just, I feel like they've lost their way. And maybe there's a way back. I'm sure they'll find it, just not right now. Well, the new CEO I don't know. I mean, the is new, making changes, yeah. for sure. You saw the pictures of the new... Uh, so that's, yeah, I wanted to talk yeah. about that. So uh, I guess there was, a, there was a podcast with the new CEO, and he had mentioned that uh, there's absolutely going to be another Bronzo. And uh, I, I read transcripts, I said... It's going to be the same retail. It's like a seventeen thousand dollars retail, and I saw online mockups, and I guess he didn't release these. This is what, based on I guess the rumors, and it's not like Rolex. Like rumors can certainly be true coming out of Panerai, right? Um, and it's basically a three a a, a, a bronze three eighty nine with like a chocolate ceramic bezel. I think that this would be a big issue. Well, number one, if you're selling bronze watches for seventeen thousand um, dollars, like how can Tudor make one for four then? Like, what? Why is there such a crazy price point oh. for a bronze Panerai? And I understand, you know, the first bronze Panerai, the 382, which is still pretty strong, it's 13 something, some odd thousand dollar retail, and they sold out of those. A thousand watches, gone. Second model, 507, and this was back when Panerai was really hot. Again, same price point, I think it was like a $500 difference because it had the power reserve on the front. Sold out of those, gone. Third bronzo was really, really strong, but if you guys check online right now, that watch has gotten soft. Yeah. And it's disheartening to me because the Bronzo was kind of like that was the the it's pulse. best watch well, by far. It's the best yeah. watch, but it was that. That's how you know what Panerai is doing. The blue Bronzo has gotten soft, and you know we've seen 
Panerai, th- even throughout like an, on a yearly basis, it goes up and it goes down, right? That's what happens. But to see it that see them as low as they are is upsetting. If they release a fourth Bronzo, especially if it's anything like the 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 mock-up, and if you guys want to search on your own, Panerai Bronzo 2019 will show you some mock-ups and. And again, we're not saying that this is exactly what it's going to be. Right. But if it is this, it's going to be very upsetting. But it is. There is one coming. So whether or not it looks like those photos or not, mm-hmm. it's been confirmed that there is one a fourth one coming. So the most expensive bronze watch that exists, right? So, but yeah, but I mean, to be fair though, why a three hand dive watch? You know, it's like comparing like a three like a thirteen oh five to a Pelagos too. It's they're different watches. So it's not that the bronze is the majority of the cost. But, but that's it's why Panerai, it's more expensive. Right. Well, so Panerai is chasing the secondary market. Right. So just the release of another Bronzo shows that they're trying to revive. I mean, I I personally of, am of the opinion that Panerai is too focused on putting out volume. There's yeah. there's way too many models. There's too many families. There's too much going on. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the, if the new CEO took a to scale everything back right. and said we have five main lines, mm-hmm. right? That's it. And th- that's what we're focusing on these years, these five watches. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and then slowly maybe you roll into some. I just, they're all over the place. Well, like we I saw said, a bump just, last year. Yeah. It went up and now it's kind of, it, it flatlined and right now it's, there's a little bit of a, a, right. a downturn in terms of, of, like there's a lot of models out there. People are selling a lot of Panerai's. You can get discounts on them, which is yeah. it's a little disheartening. And we're going to see what Richemont does because we've heard about um, we've heard about them trying to go vertical, similar to how AP did. Maybe that helps um, because that's always nice. Like even if your main concern is not resale value, knowing you're buying something that you that that is worth what you're paying for is it's important when you're buying anything. Yeah. So you know, I think that uh, I think that if they release that, that'll be a misstep. Um, especially at that price point, if that's the case, and it's that watch, like it'll, it'll be very disheartening. And, and that's not going to stop me from buying Panerai's, but it's just going to make me feel not not as great, man. Like they they're doing a lot of cool things. They're they're looking to the future. They have like their Turbion movements. Like they're not doing their old style Turbions where you couldn't see them. They're doing right. these like um, oh, what is it? Laser printed titanium cases. Material science. That's Material what we've science talked about before. Like right. they're they're at the forefront of that. Like they should be producing. That's not their DNA though. But I mean, like it's cool. that's the direction that they want to go. Then just embrace that and stop making like duets. I don't you know like or stop making like. They're trying I don't to. Know. They're trying to. I feel like they're trying to. Uh, but they're trying to be everybody. That's the problem. Well, they're trying to attract a new customer base, right? Which is always tough. And and if we don't know the direction, then it can look like they don't have one. Hopefully they do. Hopefully they they have a plan and I, they they know what they're doing. They're talking to collectors because that's the most important thing. If you don't talk to collectors, people who are actually buying your watches, and you're just talking to people in your own yeah. industry or talking to employees or each other and an executive team, it, exactly. It's, so it's a it's, we both love Panerai. We both I come do. from a strong connection with Panerai. I like the watch. I don't want them to fail. That's that's my thing. And I feel like they're trying to cater to too wide of an audience. Maybe. And maybe you lose some of your DNA that way. I'd rather just pick a direction and run with it. Mm-hmm. Similar to like, you know, be, if you want to be the, the the material science, you know, turbions and be that. Be be the next RM with only exclusive watches. I don't care. But just pick a direction and run. Sure. Instead of making, you know, releasing 60 watches a year. Yeah. 60 different models. You know, it's crazy. Right. And, and like, you know, people can't keep track. And like people ask me about new Panerai's and I'm supposed to know about these Panerai's. I'm the Panerai guy, right? Or it's what people yeah. refer to me. And then I'm like, oh, I've never even seen this before. Right. You know, and then like something like, the, like this, uh, like I forgot all about it. 643. Was the new, uh, what was the new one? The 562? Was it the left hand eight day with the blue? 562 is a, yeah. is a um, or not 562. Titanium. What was the new one that just came out? Yeah, that you were being offered one. Yeah. It was, I mean, and the, the 1940s. Blue to be honest gradient. with you, like he offered me the watch. I'm like, what? The, what is this? You know, I didn't even seen it yet. So it's just I don't know. The it's too much to keep just track of. The 92, I think that brings. It Anyways, l- super long episode oh, for no, the, the start of uh, 2019 for you guys. Um, you know, it's Friday night. Camera guys started drinking before the episode, so he fell asleep. You got a date and, tonight, buddy? Uh, can't hear you. He's asleep. Okay. Um. So, but anyways, Jason, you got a date tonight? I do not. No, I have a date with. Uh, with a steak and maybe a glass of whiskey. Okay. Well, maybe we can find you a date tonight, Jason. Yeah. Yeah. Not you. I already said no a bunch <laughs> of times. Come on, buddy. No. Nope. Enough wine and we'll make it happen. happen. <laughs> hey. Anyways. Right. Well, you thank you very much, Morty. Find us. Yeah, absolutely. So you guys, number one, um, let me see how many subscribers. We're up to sixty-five thousand subscribers. I think we had 
less than 50 starting last year. Well, that's a good increase. We're that's happy. Crazy. Is that uh, that's about right, right? Also, very happy to announce that uh, I think the Deskies were like our highest viewed show of oh, the yeah. year last yeah, year. Yeah, people liked that. Yeah, and like, there was, listen, we didn't have any clickbait in the title, too, which yeah. some guys, some other guys who take, you know, who do our show on Fridays every once in a while will claim things might be discontinued in a, in a, uh, in a title and to get clickbait. And we didn't even do that. And uh, we did pretty well. So we're, we're stoked about that. We're proud of ourselves. We're patting ourselves on the back here. Yeah. Till this episode. Here we go. But, um, yeah, so Deskies was fun. We'll probably do something like that moving forward. Um, I think we're, there's going to be a new day that we have our show. So we're probably going to end up moving the show to Thursdays. Hey. Well, we just for you reasons that, that we decide. Um, um, but, yeah, so uh, there's going to be a lot of changes moving forward. But it'll be the same show. And, uh, yeah, so, okay, again, so subscribe. <laughs> Um, subscribe to our channel. Uh, uh, Instagram is EvoX4B11. Thank you very much. Josh has uh, Mrs. Thanos, I think it is. That's right, baby. And, uh, yeah, it's coming soon on Thursdays, apparently. Anyways, this is where he does this long outro and starts naming off things that nobody wants to hear about. And then I take the microphone off the desk, and then we cut to black. So maybe we could just... I don't know what you're talking about, Jason. Okay.